You probably know that there are several kimono events in Japan throughout the year. The biggest ones are in Tokyo, it's Kimono Salone in October and the Tokyo Kimono Show in I think usually June. But there are also smaller kimono wins throughout the whole country and today I am invited to join the Kumamoto Kimono Festa, which is the biggest kimono event we have here in Kumamoto. I had this request. It was seriously only one person on my Facebook page, but thank you so much to make a YouTube video about this kimono event. The Kumamoto event is a tiny bit special because it is not only a kimono event that vendors or brands can join. It's held with the reuse bazaar, which means there are a ton of second-hand kimono stores. They're gonna bring hand-picked items, second-hand items, and sell them here in Kumamoto. And especially here in Kumamoto, where you don't have a lot of second-hand kimono stores, this is a huge deal. I was very lucky because I was invited to help from the very beginning of this event, which is about, I think nine or eight years ago. And that is all just thanks to the organizer, Teramoto-san, who is a really good networker in the kimono business, but he also believes in people. And I was one of those small creators he believed in. And this is how I slipped into this event. <laughs> And I think I was just really, really lucky. Now that I'm a tiny bit of a bigger creator, I myself still regard myself as a small creator, but I have more followers than I did at that time. <laughs> I am actually invited to be the official ambassador of this event. So today we're gonna join this. We're gonna start off on a Thursday for me. The event actually started yesterday. And today we are going to be, or I am, not we are, I am going to be on the radio in Kumamoto Prefecture for advertising this event. I'm also trying to dress the best that I usually can because today I have to look perfect from every single ankle. And also because there are gonna be a lot of Kimono business people, not all of them are gonna know me, so. I will get the foreigner and young girl treatment. So today I just have to look absolutely stunningly perfect so no one can find a single mistake in my kitsuke. So I am approved at first sight <laughs> by people who don't know me. Okay, but now let's seriously go. これ、これなんや。これさすがのバザ。すべて。何でも出てくる。ってこと。ありがとう。あと、この子たちがみかんとゆず。あ、みかんとゆず。すごい。あと猫もいます。あ、猫ちゃん白い。白なんか。さすが
6回の開催事情で中にも開催されております全国有名リユース規模のショップバザールから、えー、着付け講師でいらっしゃいます松永美里さんにお越しいただきました美里さんこんにちはこんにちはよろしくお願いしますよろしくお願いしますよろしくお願いしますよろしくお願いしますよろしくお願いしますよろしくお願いしますよろしくお願いしますよろしくお願いしますよforgot to give you a final wrap up of the first day um, the first day usually for me is more like a, um, it's half private because it's a lot about networking and talking to the people as you hopefully could see um, because I was on the radio where I have to talk about the brands and uh, sellers who are there um, I was trying to first get a good overview about who is there and what they're selling. I was talking to one of them way too much. <laughs> um, so tired now, I swear. The radio went well. Um, I didn't say anything weird. That's the most important thing. This kimono is, by the way, getting some special treatment. I don't want to say I'm just too tired. You should know that I'm actually quite an introvert, even though it might not look like that. So very exhausting. These events are very exhausting to me. They're fun, but also exhausting. And tomorrow I'm not going to be at the venue. Tomorrow I'm just going to be at home. I will have to do some lessons tomorrow. And then Saturday is the big day. And of course you're going to come with me again this was just the first day okay i'm gonna get some rest now because i'm really really tired but i had fun i had a lot of fun oh my gosh i got to know so many cool people again okay see you on saturday bye bye <laughs> about the microphone cable right now it's the second day uh, uh, I just got finished with my dressing um, today's talk shows topic is wearing kimono in a cool way <laughs> from the point of view of someone living in Kumamoto kind of <laughs> so uh, I'm wearing a yukata I bought last year from one of the brands one of my favorite brands Todie that's at the venue of course because I want to talk about it I'm wearing it wearing it with a vintage obi with the obi domain that once my husband got me and because I also want to talk about that today I'm wearing my self-dyed obi agi I dyed with my indigo and because it's going to be really hot today I'm bringing your fan <laughs> Um, actually, I had planned to wear this as a summer kimono with a proper undergarment, but we are in a huge heat wave right now, so I'm not gonna. I also dressed my husband, by the way. <laughs> Ta da! Just a little bit behind. Like this. Please be careful. Yes, yes. Like this. Like this. We bought this obi for him on the first day 
um, I asked the weaver, Kuroki-san, uh, if he can send this obi with to Komodo because he won't be here this time. And he did, so yay! <laughs> And we're both wearing the same tabi. We're wearing our ha Harinezumi tabi. <laughs> today I'm also gonna do some shopping. So today we're gonna be the most fun day. So I'm gonna see you at the venue. Bye bye. I forgot to mention, I'm gonna upload, I'm gonna live stream the talk show today and I'm gonna let it on Instagram. So it's gonna be in Japanese, but if you wanna watch that, hop over on my Instagram and watch it even today. I'm gonna leave it there. Okay, see you then. ご説明もできる。どっちかにしますか赤でしょうね。赤にしよう。あ、この着物って本当私も持ってます。ご存知の方いると思いますけど。あれ映画の作品で言っていいですかあ、いいですよ。これあの私のすごいハマってる絵があ
hope I don't look too bad. I have a very lazy hairstyle right now. <laughs> it's the next day. Yesterday we were full six hours at the venue, which means I came back really, really tired. Yesterday I had so much adrenaline in my whole body that I mostly don't remember anything <laughs> what happened. Uh, today uh, I got up early, I did yukata classes this morning. I do not really remember a lot of the conversations I had, but I'm really happy that I could meet a lot of my followers, I could meet new people, I could meet people that I haven't seen in a very, very long time. Like uh, people who went with me to kimono school or uh, classmates from my sewing school. Oh, one of my for former German students came too. <laughs> that was really cool. Yesterday I also did some shopping. Um, I want to show you. Uh, let me get some of the things. <laughs> it's actually not too much um, when you have watched more of the hauls. On my channel you know that I tend to very often buy many many items at once. Um, with this channel my personal kimono journey is also growing. So right now I rather invest in pieces that fit into my lifestyle right now. Um, I have learned a lot through the last years when we talk about fiber, what is best for me living in Kumamoto. When you watch rewatch or when you restream the talk show we talked about yesterday, it's all in Japanese, but that's also what I talked about because when you live in a different part of Japan where you don't really have snow, where it's kind of cold, but not super duper cold, um, and it's mostly hot throughout the year, you just wear kimono differently. So this time I only invested in quality items that I know fit into my lifestyle. I don't know if I will tell you the prices. <laughs> it's, it's a tiny bit more on the pricey side. Number one is the OV for my husband that I've al already shown you yesterday, but you didn't get a real close up for for it yesterday. You can see it's all octopuses. No, Ika. I'm gonna put it in screen. This one is a Chikuzen Hakata Ori, which means it's not produced in Fukuoka City itself. It's a tiny bit on the outside. And on the back, it actually has Kenjo Kana. This is one of the patterns that Hakata Ori have. This is produced by uh, Kuroki Orimono. Last year, he was actually here, the weaver himself. This year he wasn't. <laughs> this year he just uh, let some of the store owners just bring his stuff and have it there. And I met him in Tokyo actually, because when I was on a business trip in Tokyo, they were in Tokyo. So I just dropped by to say hello. And I saw this obi and thought it's perfect for my hubby. So they brought it. Because it's a new obi, it's all silk. Um, this one was 30,000. Yeah. The next one is what I didn't open up yet. It's an obidome from Itzka Glassworks. Um, you can see still it's really cute packaging. I am going to put a picture on screen. This is my birthday present. My birthday is this week. So you will get a picture of me wearing it probably for my birthday. <laughs> I'm not going to open it up. I promise my husband. Second one is this obi. I just couldn't leave it there. The brand is called uh, Saron Do Happiness, is what you call it in Japanese. I think if you wanted to really pronounce it in French, which you shouldn't because it's not the right grammar. The owner, Yuko san, she comes every year to Komodo. You probably saw me talking to her quite a lot in the footage. She always has a Japanese traditional hairstyle and her store has very unique designs, I think. It's very inspired by, anti by antique kimono, but also like Showa era. And she puts stuff in her designs she just loves, like for example, like me, kukeshi. <laughs> um, my kukeshi geta is what I got at her store too. I always get kukeshi designs from her. I love this design so much because at the end of the obi it says kukeshi lovers. <laughs> it's so cute. And on the other side at the end, there is even a Shiba Inu. 
in the car with all the kokeshi. It's so pop and I just loved it some more. We are right before the debut of the uh, Barbie movie in Japan. And of course I was thinking about going to and I thought color wise and just because these are traditional Japanese dolls, I think I can come up with a really cute outfit. And last but not least is actually a kimono bolt. This one is from the brand Kippe and it is cotton that is woven in Yamagata prefecture in the town Yonezawa. I don't know if I ever said that ever here. I'm a huge Yamagata fan. It's one of the reasons why we go snowboarding there. And um, they're also very famous for staff flowers, dyeing red with a staff flower. They have a lot of kimono, traditional weaves and crafts there. And I slowly want to work my way into also visiting ateliers and stuff like that. This year I'm going to go to Kyoto. <laughs> So it's not gonna happen this year. I hope I can bring you along in Kyoto. Let's see. Oh my gosh, you will get so much relog content in the past few, in the next few months. I don't know if it comes across in camera, but it almost looks like silk. It has this really nice shine to it, like silk. And this one was one of the series that was a tiny bit more pricey with uh, 3,000, uh, 30,000 yen plus tax. Yamagata prefecture is famous for example omeshi that's another famous silk weave. They also produce tsumugi because they really produce high quality they have a lot of specific high quality weaving techniques there and you can totally tell that they're using this onto this cotton bolt and because it's cotton it's less pricey than when you buy a silk bolt. I'm really happy with this one. Um, Let's see when I get sewed, to get to sew it. I'm hope I'm hoping that I can start to sew this in probably October. My last purchase isn't here because I have actually ordered tailoring for that. It was on my shopping list. I knew that Koten is gonna come. It's one of my favorite kimono brands. And this year they made a specific yukata. I hope I can show you the original picture. Uh, where I have seen it uh, from Nayuko-san. Uh, she wore it uh, on her account and was like instantly in love with it. And it is orange but not too orange and I don't know what they call the pattern. I personally call it Biru no Maru <laughs> because inside of it it has hop and weed and it's seriously symbolizing beer. <laughs> you know that I'm from Germany and I really like beer a lot. <laughs> so after hearing what the pattern itself means, this was just a perfect yukata for me. I'm just looking forward for it to finally arrive here. <laughs> it's gonna take, because we have Obon Yasumi, which is like um, a few days of uh, a few days off for many, many people who work in companies and factories. Um, it's gonna take a tiny bit longer until the kimono itself is tailored. So I think I will get it mid-September. For the bowl itself, when you buy it, it's usually 30,000 yen plus tax. And tailoring was uh, 18,000 yen which is actually quite cheap. <laughs> you know that I tend to have a tiny bit of a budget put aside and actually buy new kimono from actual kimono makers, weavers, dyers, designers that I really trust and love. This is my way of supporting these type of wonderful people. <laughs> Okay, that was it for this video. I'm not quite sure how this will turn out because I didn't have any time to view the footage that I have taken uh, these past two days. So we will see <laughs> how this video will turn out. I hope you like this. I hope you wanna see more like this. So if you like this video, please tell me down below in the comments. 
If you're new here and if you like learning more from a professional kimono teacher, feel free to subscribe. I would be really happy to have you here. I'm gonna get some rest now and I see all of you very soon in my next kimono adventure. Bye bye!